Hello and welcome to another Literary Lair mini-sode. In this video, instead of a book, we're going to talk about a TV show with literary origins, the critically acclaimed The Storyteller, a show developed by Jim Henson and his company that retold European folk tales, many of which weren't very well known to Western audiences, and to an extent, still aren't, save for their inclusion in a work by Jim Henson. The show features, as the storyteller, the late great John Hurt, who, if you don't recognize purely on name alone, you would recognize based on his face. Or, failing that voice, since he was an alien, Doctor Who, Hellboy, and, of course, the most important sci-fi film ever made, Spaceballs. Oh no, not again. It also featured Jim Henson's son Brian, the current chairman of the Jim Henson Company, as the voice and puppeteer of the storyteller's dog, who acted as an audience surrogate for the storyteller to tell his stories to, and would provide commentary or questions. The show was also used in tandem with the ill-fated The Jim Henson Hour, and many of the episodes would air there alongside the Muppet television segments. Personally, I really like the Jim Henson Hour, and I probably wouldn't have ever checked out this show uh, without it having been featured there. If you want more background on that stuff, go check out Defunct TV's Jim Henson Retrospective, because not only does Kevin go into way more detail than I could ever hope, it's also just a really nice series. The show was a critical success, with even detractors of the Jim Henson Hour giving praise to the imaginative and inventive storyteller segments, and seeing as they use stories as the basis of the show, I figured that I could talk about them, about how they differ from the original tale, if at all, and which one I feel is the stronger story. I don't know if I'm going to cover every episode of the storyteller, but this isn't really a show that I feel comfortable with doing an overview of, just because every episode is distinct and special. Uh, in their own ways, as opposed to a standard series that has a stable formula. But we're not starting at the beginning. No, instead, I want to start on the episode that I enjoyed the most, and was based in a folktale that I had prior knowledge of. A story short, which sounds like it was titled by Yoda, is based on the tale of Stone Soup, an early Celtic folk tale, according to the on-screen text, which I'd hazard a guess and assume that you've probably heard of before, since it's been parodied or told in shows like Between the Lions, The Land of the Lost, and Little House on the Prairie, among others, and has been retold in various forms, as a good folk tale should be, meaning that there are dozens of different versions of it that change the story in mind ways. In fact, if my memory is correct, and let's be fair, it usually is, the version that I was read as a kid featured anthropomorphic animals, in particular pigs, as shown on the cover. So odds are that everyone remembers a distinctly different version of the story based on who it was told by and what book they used. Which is fascinating to me, because the story is universal, but so many of the details are slightly different. Case in point, the retelling we're checking out today. Interestingly enough, unlike the rest of the episodes, this story features the storyteller as a main character, and given that it gives us a lot more John Hurt, it's really no surprise that I like this episode so much. It's told as an anecdote, as the storyteller had recently forgotten the ending to a story, which made him go existential and wonder about what'll happen when there are no more stories to be told, which reminded him of a time that that almost happened. Ever notice that wise older figures always have a story for everything? And I have to say that this transition right here is beautiful, which never could have been done if the story didn't feature him as the main character. Absolutely stunning. The story starts out, like many of the interpretations of it, with a beggar, who in this case is the storyteller. He arrives at a castle intending to beg for scraps, but arrives just as the cook tosses out another beggar in a similar situation. The storyteller, being a quick thinker, immediately plays it off, asking for just a pot and water to boil a stone in so he can make stone soup for himself and the beggar. The cook is incredulous, but the storyteller just goes ahead and cooks. Though he does make a few requests for a small bit of vegetables, potatoes, meat, at least he gets right to it. If this was a cooking blogger, there would have been like 10 minutes of backstory into the recipe. It was a cold September day when I thought of making this soup. Once the soup is to his satisfaction, the storyteller, the beggar, and the cook enjoy it until the meal is finished and the cook realizes that he has been had. 
Now, the difference between this and the typical story is mainly that, one, it is far longer. Most versions stop after the meal, like a good guest it knows not to impose once the soup has been eaten. But also that the storyteller is punished for his actions. The usual story is more about the virtue of sharing and how when everyone contributes, the collective whole is improved. The person who gives the potatoes and the person who donates the stock, everyone contributes and then everyone can reap the benefits of delicious soup. A rather good moral, though one that not everyone subscribes to. Here, the cook is absolutely furious when he discovers the deception and wants to boil the storyteller alive in oil, which seems to bring him great joy. You know, I bet the cook would get on famously with shock eye from the two doctors. The king, however, is a far more even-handed ruler, and even after the storyteller pleads his case, the king gives him a reprieve. If the storyteller can tell the king one story a night for 365 days, an entire year, he'll be free, but if he fails to tell one story, the cook gets him. That might sound harsh, but you gotta understand, the king has a very stressful day job creating planets. He needs some form of entertainment to relax after a hard day's work. Otherwise, he'll never make anything as award-winning as the fjords ever again. For a year, the storyteller thrives, being paid for his work, being appreciated, and even found a wife along the way who he loves dearly. But on that final day, after 364 stories, he's tapped out. He just can't think of anything to do. God, do I know that feeling. Why do you think it's been so long in between Literary Lair minisodes? Back to the story, the storyteller struggles to find a story, being taunted by the cook, until that other beggar from the beginning of the story shows up. The storyteller is far too stressed to focus on the meeting, but the beggar offers to play a game, since he has an equal amount of gold pieces as the storyteller has gained for his stories, 364 pieces, and asks to play dice with the storyteller, betting their gold against each other, and while he knows he shouldn't, the storyteller plays and rolls a nat zero, so instead of winning, he instead pushes his gold too hard, trips backward, and lands in the vat of oil the end. Or at least that's how it feels when I play Starfinder and make a bad roll. Go figure. No, instead the storyteller just loses his gold, but the beggar encourages him to keep playing, putting his wife up as collateral. And just like Spongebob when Mr. Krabs lost him in that poker game, the beggar wins the storyteller's wife, and then the beggar goes him into going again, betting the storyteller himself. And not only that, but the beggar is magic and turns the storyteller into a hare. And can I just say, I know that Jim Henson never really set out to make children's entertainment except for Sesame Street, but if I was a kid watching this show about, about and let's be completely fair, fables that most parents tell their kids, this, and I saw this horrifying scene of the storyteller being turned into a hare and squealing and screaming, that shit would have scarred me for life. Actually, scratch that. Seeing it as an adult was still scarring. And then, on his new wife's suggestion, the beggar turns the storyteller into a flea. The flea rides on the beggar's coat as he goes into the kitchen, like the beggar likely planning on getting some revenge on the cook by gambling against him, using those games that the kids are doing on TikTok, where it's like, I bet you can't move that straw with your breath and not the other two, where they game the system and cheat. But instead of taking money or food, he instead takes body parts and uses his magics to cause the cook's fingers and ear to fall off. Okay, so maybe not that similar to the kids on TikTok. The beggar then goes to the king, intending to step in as entertainment, since the storyteller is otherwise occupied. The beggar then makes the prince vanish, but can't bring him back. That's enough for the king to decide that he gets the oil, and with the storyteller flea still on his coat, the beggar is tossed into the vat. But the beggar survives, and in short order, both the cook's body parts and the prince are returned while the beggar has vanished. Before the story ends, the storyteller has returned to his body before the dice game, and realizes that none of it had happened. He's taken before the king, but he still has no story, instead telling of his experiences during the day, which turns out to be a much better story than he would have come up with, making the storyteller realize that the beggar's gift was the final story, and all's well that ends well. Well, except that the storyteller's wife, having become enamored with the beggar's magic, leaves the storytellers and goes to chase the beggar, so other than that, the episode ends with the dog offering up his bone so that he and the storyteller can make bone soup. Anyone else think that that would be the title of the Stone Soup porn parody?
As a more rebuffed retelling, the storyteller wins out in the end if you compare it to the original fable, uh, just by sheer volume of content. Apart from condensing the story and having it take place in a castle with just a cook and his staff as opposed to an entire village or town, the stakes are higher and there is a clear arc as opposed to the version I'm familiar with being a standard tale of morals with no villains. Clearly here the cook is the main villain. Throw in the classic Henson charm and that horrifying hair scene, and it is a recipe for an insanely memorable take on a well-known fable. Though a lot of that credit has to go to John Hurt for his typically stellar performance, although really everyone in the cast does really well. While the version I remember will always hold a very special place in my heart, this version is great, right down to the really sweet ending where, after the storyteller reveals that his wife left him to chase the rag bag, he has a nice moment of bonding with the dog. And that's not even getting into how brilliant the cinematography and set design are. The entire series of the storyteller is on both Amazon Prime and Stars, so if you've never seen it but are a fan of either John Hurt or Jim Henson, I highly recommend it. It is by far the best way to experience these fables, whether it's for the first time or re-experiencing them after hearing them as a kid. See you next time.